States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So tonight we're missing Estrada and Lynn. I knew about both of those, so I just want to mark that in my notes. Got it. Would you like to do the public input statement? Absolutely. So our first public input session is a 15-minute session with each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement. A second public input session may be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by the board chair. The speaker will give his or her name, address, and reason for speaking. Public input is designated for noble residents. The board chair may grant non-residents the opportunity to address the board. Statements concerning subject matter that falls under the law regarding executive sessions cannot be made during public input. For example, matters of involving personnel. Is there any public input? Going once, no. going twice. So. All right. So we will move on to the minutes. Okay, so we went over those and over those. I'm thinking they're good, but <laughs> <laughs> never know. To be quiet, I sent a couple of emails about the minutes. Um, I'll start with them. Really? Yeah. I didn't see them either. I sent them to Jen. Oh. Okay. Should I send them to you, Sue? More just, just carbon them yeah, to us. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, okay, see if I can remember them now. For one thing, the... Um, the link on the article regarding homelessness goes to the Katie Taylor article. The, the link on the, on the what goes to the Katie article Taylor? regarding homelessness. Oh, okay. Where it says quoted, it goes to the Katie Taylor article. Okay. That's easy. Um, Katie's pretty special. Thank it's you. Okay. Let me see if I can find my um, mailbox and I'll. Um, Oh, yeah, I can see that. So is it vice versa? Does the other one go? No, they both go to Katie. No, they both oh. go to Katie. So, you know, she's pretty special. Twice. Aren't you, aren't you impressed that I checked it out? I'm, thanks. <laughs> Thank you for that. You were welcome. That's yeah, kind of funny because. Um, Did you like the picture of Dwayne at least? That was yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. You should have stretched it out though. It would have been I very know. funny that way. Because <laughs> you got all that empty space, you know. <coughs> you have to stop yeah, pulling like, around. Yeah. That's, way too, that's way too hard. I couldn't find it. Oh. Um, you can take a motion on it, and if you find that, we can back up. Um, Becky, is that okay? Yeah, that was the biggest one. The others were just <coughs> little things, um, little um, well, We can do that as amended, and then, okay. you, then when you find your things, we'll fix it. Okay. okay. All right. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as amended. Thank you. I'll second it. All in favor? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, just made it. Five, oh. One two abstains. Yeah. Two. two, Travis, Travis and, Nancy. and Nancy. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> September 5th. All right. Review the opening day enrollment. Okay, so. 3,010 total students on opening day. We had um, 200, uh, we have 200 total kindergartners registered. Um, and the numbers for grade one, this will be posted, the numbers will be posted yeah. in there, but I'll just give you a quick hit on those. 220 first graders, 217 second grade. Third grade's a dip for us at 186. <coughs> fourth grade is 210 and the fifth grade is 245 that's where we start a bulge sixth grade and seventh grade continue the bulge at 261 and 271 um, we have uh, 246 eighth graders 239 in the ninth 
249 in the 10th, and then 226 and 236 in the 11th and 12th. So the 3,010 students was within the range that we anticipated for the start of the school year. And we'll see how that progresses. We're paying attention to housing starts. Um, one of the things that I'm most curious about right now is in the, and I saw this in, in minutes and plus heard from the citizen. Um, in Berwick, across from Hussey, the, the uh, mobile park was originally scheduled to have 90 homes. It uh, was approved by the Berwick Planning Board, I believe, at 77 units. It was cut down some because of nesting turtles. Um, and, and that's what it said. And then mm -hmm. uh, the regulation that the I couldn't find if it was approved or not, but the considering is that there must be at least one person living in the home who is 55 or over, which is a very different definition of the idea of a 55 and over park. What that means is we have the potential of 77 homes that we could pick up an awful lot of students from. So that is a real wild card for us right now. Um, Do you know what the time frame is with the park? Um, so I, uh, it, it's already gone through the DEP. That's what the decision was to get to the 70s. As I, as I read it, this is what I interpreted from that. That's why it got to 77. And then it is, I believe, already approved by the planning board. And uh, I think it was a 4 0 vote on that. And that the, I think the next step is it's been presented and approved. So I think they can yes, begin doing some work. I would anticipate to see those units open this year. Yeah. In a way, the timing good. is actually good for us because our planning stages yeah, for the addition, mm -hmm. it's, you know, if it was a mm. year later, it might be a lot harder for us to yeah, yeah. play catch up. but. At least now, I think we can. If we have to, we can make room for the kids yeah. that might be moving in. Yeah. Of course, it'd be really nice if it ended up being yeah. five and a half students per grade. But yeah, <laughs> approximately. <laughs> yes, five and a half. Maybe five there and six there. You okay, know, we'll that's that. better. But so our our numbers are are where we anticipated. Um, I also have a copy. Uh, this took us quite a while. To get back from uh, NESDEC, which is an organization that we have a uh, have an agreement with, part of their agreement is population studies. There's a lot of <coughs> extra information in here that may be extraneous, not too helpful to the specific situation, but. What this talks about in general is that um, in the blue column in the top major chart, it lists right now that, for, well, for the previous school year, 2018-19, that we had 3,076. So you look at that and say, wait a minute, Steve just said 310. So have we actually lost 66 students? I got to have a conversation with them. Um, but what their chart presents in, let's see, on page three, uh, they're not numbered, but if you look at the blue chart on the top of page three, enrollment projections by grade, it shows that the projection should go from, in the blue column, the 18, 19 down to 28, 29. If you look far over to the right, you'll see 3076. It projects for this year, the current year, 3067. Now I just got this data from them today and they already <laughs> know my actual projection is 310. So I'm not sure where the extra 57 students just came from. 57 variety sauce, I guess. So I will send this back and ask them to reconsider their numbers. 
Um, but in according to this, it shows flat population through 2829. Now, just as a little bit of a cautionary note on that, there was a population study done in 2011, and by 2013, it was off 300, a little over 300 students, about 10% off in two years. So we need to continue our work with NESDEC so they can do some better work on this. Uh, I'm not thrilled with the numbers that I'm seeing there. I don't, I know they're not accurate today. Why should I think they're going to be accurate, come close to being accurate in 10 years? But that's the document. I figured I would just share it with you. See so you have, you can say you heard it here. Uh, I've shared this information with uh, an architect and engineer firm that I'm, I'm working on the board's behalf to uh, get to contract level work and uh, this is one of the necessary things and I believe I'm, I have a conference call with them tomorrow. <clears throat> what is that? Great question. Um, um, that's the ungraduated. ungraduated. So that's, that's a, because in the state you can go till age 20. Okay. So you can be, most of the time we call it post-grad, but mm -hmm. under their category, mm -hmm. I think that must stand for un, mm -hmm. ungraduated. Not sure why that term. That makes sense. <clears throat> um, Sue and I have had the opportunity to get into every classroom from K to 7. And I'll be getting around to high school classrooms, as many as possible tomorrow, but it takes about, Chuck, I think it takes like three days for me to cover classrooms here. Yeah. Um, so uh, we're getting in, greeting folks, and Things just getting good. a feel for things. Um, some, of the, some of the environments right now are just, I mean, there are schools that just are feel-good places, and then there are schools that have incredible shifts in that for the good that uh, I, I don't know what it is, but just off to a really good, really good start. <clears throat> um, sometimes feelings can be kind of like business-like and, and strong sense about academics and strong sense about certain things, but just that uplifting, overwhelming feeling when you walk into classrooms and you see the teachers and you see the students and the, and the sports staff and so forth. It's just been a very, very nice, it's one of those things I get to do in the job. So feedback from one incoming junior. Mm -hmm. um, mm, was wait a minute, let me think about that. It yeah. was the best first couple of days wow. ever. Nice. And a little bit of trepidation about going into a pretty difficult course load. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the biggest the two things that stood out were that all of the teachers um, were interesting and nice, um, and that the class sizes were smaller than what he had been in in the past, and made he, he made a direct correlation to how well he thought he was going to be able to do based on sure? hard classes and smaller class yeah. size. Yeah. Nice. So it's it was, you know. And he has a fine eye for those things. Mm -hmm. We know the youth. <laughs> And I have to say that my five grandchildren, ages in grade seven, five, two, two, and kindergarten, were all just thrilled with their beginnings. Mm. Oh good. my gosh, that's so good to hear. And they're all in Lebanon, which we know Lebanon's awesome anyway. <laughs> mm. Now we had, uh, I got one bus call about a route, and it was for was past Fernal Shore, <laughs> up the hill oh on Wentworth, so far away. bang a right, so far away, these poor kids. Yeah. And, uh, and it was about the, the length of it in uh, Newbridge, and I, and I was, far so, got a, got a call one day, the next morning, I'm sitting there with the parent chatting, <laughs> while the two kids are going, you're the cat in the hat. <laughs> well, the, the daughter was, the son was the kindergartner, and uh, we're... <laughs> We're, we're chatting, and, and I think she, she understood um, we are a two-tiered system, yeah. 
and it is one of the further points that you could live in mm. the three communities yeah. and and as say as um, yeah how and the roads uh, the, it Maybe was <laughs> according to uh, Waze because I, I, I have a Waze app on my phone W A Z E mm -hmm. and I was showing a person and said for me to get from here right now to my office was thirty four mm -hmm. thirty six something like that. 34 minutes, let's say. That's a straight shot. With no, a car. Stops. Yeah, no stops. <laughs> no stops. So yeah. yeah. So it's just, I get it. How do you fix it? I get though? it. And, really and it, it. Because there, there was a high schooler involved, too. And the younger kids, you know, parents might notice that, hey, my child's on the bus for 20 minutes on the way to school and then 40 minutes on the way home. What the heck is going on? It's the reverse. They do the reverse yeah. yeah, we're sharing Fair the wealth. Yeah. You know, some students shouldn't be riding 40 minutes because twice a day because we take the route in the exact same direction. Mm -hmm. You reverse the direction or something like that, and you, you make that morning route to the end route uh, fair, as, as equitable as you can for everybody. So um, I think transportation, I'm sure Brenda Craven's got, got more calls and so forth than I did, but. That's amazing to me in the last two years, I've hardly had any communication from parents. Not one of them has been ticked off either. So they've all been, hey, can we, how can we think about this? So I, I'm really uh, feeling very happy about the opening of school this year from the transportation perspective to the shape of the buildings you want to see amazing grounds work, go check the front of Huzzy Elementary. Some family named the... The Hamels, perhaps. Oh, the Hamels. <laughs> Eva and, Eva and Dave Hamill uh, have done some incredible work there once again. Mm. And um, we're, we're, we're looking good, buildings are feeling good, yeah. and numbers are good. So, thank you. Great. Is that different than this agenda item? No, I, sort of I rolled view, them. View, sorry. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, some I policy readings? Of, oh, oh, one thing I did want to share about the super, superintendent's start. Um, I've taken to uh, the, a resource, a, a communication vehicle this year that a number of other mm -hmm. administrators <laughs> are using. I am <laughs> tweeting. Oh yep. we will, so we, we need to get to you guys so Twitter my, so that you can no, get them. No, my family, my family would have said, "It always knew you were a twit. But yeah. <laughs> I'm, now, I'm now a tweeter. I tweeted out about, so Hanson music teacher Aaron Dolly stands next to the ukulele rack Mike Desjardins made this summer. Mike's a grandparent at uh, Lebanon, in, in Lebanon and Hanson. Nice job, Mike. By the way, the ukuleles were free from donors' choose. So free rack, free, free ukuleles for an entire class. Nice. And, then, the yeah. Yeah. and then I'm standing next to this young lady. Oh, cancel my tweet, it says. Hey, Chris, <laughs> I won't touch that. I'm standing in our class over at Huzzy next to this young lady. If you go, I'll tell you how to get to the tweet. Yeah, I know you can't see it. Let's just pretend. Uh, she <laughs> it's a cute is can you uh, first? She's second grade. So uh, Elise Rowe has each, for each student in the school, she says to them in the first art class, really tough assignment, draw a tree. And she has saved them from year to year. So the little girl is looking at her tree that she drew as a kindergartner. Yeah, tree is a kindergartner, tree is a second grade, as a first grader, and she's drawing her second grade tree, and she looks up and says to me, I've grown so much. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking at, I'm going, <laughs> we're done, thank you. Yeah. So, My work is done. It was awesome. <laughs>
Oh, yeah. I, I, she said, uh, exactly. Oh, look how much I've grown. That was her look quote. Look how much I've grown. Yeah. And then I was in uh, <laughs> Mrs. Wirtz's classroom, the rocking and rolling at Elks. I was over at a ribbon cutting ceremony for the new uh, speaker system. That they, so we, we cut ribbons for speakers, but it was a great first day, uh, second day celebration for the opening of school as well so what i'll do is i'm going to try to become a tweeter and uh get those <laughs> oh, out there's just so many places i could go with this <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> pretty excited that's about it. I, the kids okay. actually use twitter a oh yeah amount. yeah they do yeah we're gonna Teenagers. our hope is that we'll we can at least get you guys you know set 60 twitter yeah. account so that you can get the information because these yeah. guys are using them as well and we want to get you know we you need to hear the good as w along with the, the stressful stuff right yeah it's a nice a lot of good. it's a nice balance yeah. so people go to um there's there's a hashtag and i'm not sure why the difference between one thing being a hashtag and one thing being an at symbol yet chris russo's really working hard with me um, i think the hashtag is supposed to be the whole thread of the conversation that, yeah, it's in, like in a the, general theme that other people also might. He might have said that. He might have said that. Might have been the key word right there. Well, so just ask your kids to help you because yeah. that's what the I think. Yeah. 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 Certain Twitter is going to be another user. Yeah. Handle. Jeez. Yeah. So <laughs> hashtag we are noble. So at hashtag we are noble, you can find uh, a bunch of apps to connect with, and then mine is at. <laughs> MSAD 60 suit. So MSAD 60 SUPT. And you'll see something that, something that looks like this. So. Thank you. Now moving on. We're working on it. All right. <laughs> Policy readings. All right. So this is first reading. So I went through the policy manual this summer. And I'm looking at a stack <laughs> that's maybe definitely less than a centimeter thick that are between 2001 to 2009. So we have cut the policy manual down from 16 years to the goal is at the end of this year to be within a decade. That's a lot. <laughs> of work wow. on those on those policies Very exciting remarks too, I might add. I, you know what <laughs> you know what when i'm sitting sitting in my office going yes and saying what's the matter is our policies are down to 10 years yeah. they're gonna be down to He's so happy they're feeling like boy you really need to get some medication yeah um then i also sent you a yeah. copy of the other side of the ledger mm -hmm. uh or the left side of the page that says here are the 79 bills that were passed into legislation by the 129th this past by the end of June. I read those and my take on it was, is there a problem? And if there's not, why are we trying to solve it? Um, it just seemed a lot of them were very frivolous. Um, you need to talk to your legislators about that. So well, there's a, a lot of people think there are problems, and they move forward with it, whether they're general. Do they group check with thing. anyone? <laughs> well, I, I think it depends on how many people you check with. If I was in my role, if I check with one board member and I hear about a certain thing, I might think, wow, we've got, but then I talk to other people and folks might say, I didn't, I didn't catch that, I didn't figure that one out. But if I, it's, so it's, it's the same thing as a legislator. If you have a small contingency voice that you typically rely on, um, it, it will obviously, the, the, the volume of your sample size will color your perspective no matter what you do. So. Um, what I think we see here is a representation of an overwhelming number of initiatives that different people had on education. It seemed like a lot of people wanted their say. And that also includes at the end of it, the approximately 80 bills that were rejected. So there were over 150 bills just on ed that impacted education. Were these 
is, was there, were there so many because they had been sort of backlogged? Does any well, of this I, have to do with like, Yeah, new? so so that's part of it. I, I think there's two things going on. I think that um, any time you see a shift in, um, I'll say the word power, and I mean like uh, one party, any time you see a shift in party power in one area or another, I think you tend to see that occur, and I think that the longer it is between the shifts, the more prolific the shift. So, for instance, Governor LePage being a Republican governor eight years, then Governor Mills being a Democratic governor first year in, I think you're going to see a proliferation from, from bills related to that. It's not a professional study, it's just my trend that I happen to think I see. Um, and then the other thing is, what seems to go on, and I think it's more of a newer trend or, or a more expanded trend, is that if it doesn't go through the first time, you just submit it for the next 20 times and sooner or later it's mm -hmm. going to go through. You're going to see it one way or another. Push through, yeah. yeah, it'll get pushed through. People will get tired of it. It'll get watered down enough so that people think it doesn't say this or says that or, or whatever. So I think we're seeing both of those sorts of things. And some of them are so general <coughs> that it's hard to picture how they could be implemented. Yeah. For example, um, LD 1306 resolved um, to examine issues related to bullying, bullying in schools. Haven't we already done that? So there and are, what does examining it do? Yes. Who examines it? So. I have, a, a, I have a situation going on in our schools right now that I'm dealing with that is about this, I'm going to view it as perceived case of significant bullying and so forth. And it, one person's view, a parent's view on a situation mm -hmm. could be in the information and evidence that a parent might wish to say, look, see, see all these things. And then I look at it and go, talk to me again about that because I have the record right here. I have every nurse communication. I have every email back to kindergarten. I have every, uh, I have every, everything that's happened here, teacher notes, administrator notes. What are you talking about? So some of that will, you have to take that with a, a grain of salt and know that out of 3,000 students to have one or two of those cases going on at any given time is a really good percentage, but they're brutal cases. They're, they're tough things to deal with. So we're, we're, we work through stuff like that. Well, if you hear, if, if you, uh, Becky, were the legislator for the area uh, and, in a, and a particular parent said, look at the things that has happened to my son or daughter, you might say, yeah, wow, th we've really got to, mm -hmm. we've got to do better. And so you, you might bring up some legislation. So I think sometimes there's actual real cases, and I think sometimes there's a lot of perception in things yeah. <coughs> and a, a multiplier effect. And I think what, well, I mean, that's getting off topic, but... I think what people don't realize is that bullying isn't just about one child being mean to another child. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, con it's consistent pervasive. behavior, pervasive behavior mm -hmm. over time, yeah. leading to a negative feeling on the part yeah. of the other child. Um, and I, I ran into that. I, I talked to Patty Gilly one time about bullying mm -hmm. that was going on with one of my kiddos, and um, she basically said, yep, yeah, that's bullying, I'll address it, and she did, she addressed it very nicely. Mm -hmm. The problem was resolved. I went in another time and I mentioned a situation that had happened and she said, no, that's not bullying, that's just somebody not, you know, saving a seat for someone or something like that. It, you know, the child may have felt sad, but it's not that pervasive behavior over time. Yeah. And I think that's the difference the parents don't understand. Someone was mean to Johnny, therefore it's bullying. Yeah, anything I mean, that's annoying 
or that somebody says that I didn't like that that made me feel uncomfortable one person's one student's definition of what made mm -hmm. the student feel uncomfortable and who said what to whom and who did something and who didn't do something uh, it, it's amazing the things that I guess as a parent I mm -hmm. One of the things I used to do was I'd go in and say, if you don't believe half the thing my, things my son says about me, <laughs> I won't believe half of what he says about you either. So uh, in jest, you know, just saying, hey, you know, we, we know kids like certain things and don't like certain things. But there is a very specific definition of bullying. And there was an article in the Press Herald about that during the last school year saying, uh, right at the start of the year, I believe it was, how is it possible that in the 17-18 school year, Bangor had, what, maybe two or three incidences, mm -hmm. incidents of bullying reported in the entire school system? That's impossible. They, they must not know what it means. And we looked at our statistics and we found that they were similarly in line, much smaller than, than by definition, than somebody might have projected. So. I think what's happening is there's a, a lot of people, if you t I think if you took a survey, you might find that adults would say there seems to be an increase in incivility, uh, one person to the next, or, mm -hmm. or which could be road rage kind of stuff, or it could be smaller than that, but just a general incivility. I think, I think people people I talk to are generally feeling something like that. So that carries over. And so an uncivil act becomes an act of bullying, and it's right. not. Well, my point in bringing that one up was I wonder how many of these have had a real thoughtful discussion as they decided to bring them forward. I'm just hoping that they couldn't, right? But There's I think many. Many in this case they might have because it, what was highlighted, Steve highlighted, it says um, to comprehensively examine issues associated with bullying in schools and in particular how Maine's laws relating to bullying mm -hmm. should be improved. So I think actually this is not a bad one because they're looking at the legislation that they've already approved mm -hmm. and saying, okay, what is going on here? Is this working? Is it not working? Did we yes. address the issues that needed to be addressed? So I actually think this might have been not a waste of time to put that one in there. Now, if you okay. think about Maybe a total not. volume of about 150 in your hands right there, mm -hmm. and that's just in education, how much time could the education uh, committee or the uh, um, appropriations committee, for instance, how much time could they spend on just these pieces versus uh, the appropriations, um, yeah. the other things that are happening? There's a lot of them in there that are studies. Right. Let's see what's going on with this, and they put time frames in place. There are several in there that I've high, uh, more than several, that I've highlighted that will impact us. Food service is a great example. Um, and I'm working with Charlotte Bates, who is the absolute duchess of policies from Augusta. Um, she is a great, great resource. And she's been doing the job long enough so that she knows all everything that's in man that should be in manuals uh, on, a, on a very discreet, specific policy level. So I look forward to using her resources again this year. Um, I've been communicating with her about what policies will come up and the list is being developed, and I'll bring that forward when I get it. But my intent would be that by the end of the year, we're in the same decade, <laughs> which is a really good thing. You might say, um, you know, some of the policies are going to be 2010, and we're going to be in 2020. That's huge. That's mm -hmm. very good. Um, let's see. So on the policies, we have uh, the first one is J.I. Now you notice this N.R. after each one of these. The N.R. means not required. So the state has a list of policies that they say this is required. You must have this. 
And then there are other policies that they say, well, you don't have to have it, but a lot of districts do. We try to figure out which ones, if it's required, let's make sure we have it and update it. If it's not required, do we need it? Does it serve a purpose? And is this the best place for it, or is a handbook the best place for something and not have it be a policy? So um, we've done quite a bit. <laughs> Joanne, I know your book doesn't show it right now, but we've done quite a bit of culling. I like to keep my, make sure I keep you on the straight and narrow. Well, I like to have the ones that we've changed. And that's proved to be a benefit. Yes. So if what we want to make sure of is that we have policies that need to be policies not just this would be nice if what is going to happen if we don't have this we can have guidelines and procedures it doesn't have to be a policy so the first one is uh, jih questioning and searches of students that was last done in 2005 and then comes the uh, jih-e the dash e's are usually a checklist of some kind and then uh, and that's the student search checklist and then we also have a JIH-R. The dash R policies, as you may recall, are usually the procedures. So if this is the policy, how should the schools proceed to ensure that that policy happens? So um, you'll see an, an E and an R in this first one. I was very pleased to see in my uh, search that um, the most relevant, the most current Drummond Woods and MSMA version of JIH is almost word for word <laughs> what we have, uh, as well as the JIH-E, the checklist. The JIHR is has starts off really right on top of it, but then it, it goes significantly off the trail. Um, KF is a community use of school facilities. That one is substantially different so there's, there's going to be a lot of work and then we have a very specific one to our district which is KFB that was adopted in October 4th 2001 and it's about the high school coincidentally the high school opened a month prior to that date <laughs> <laughs> so it was okay look we got this brand new place let's do this with it so we'll, we'll need to do some uh, consideration of that did I miss any in the list there is a typo on that one. The committee will probably pick it up, but what one? JF, JFB, um, KFB. Yes. Um, in the second paragraph, recognizing that those using and enjoying the school buildings will be of all ages, uh, not of, if all yes, ages. instead of if. Thank you. That's all I could find. It. Otherwise, they're perfect. Good. Let's start <laughs> with that one. And I think too, we have to make sure the insurance um, limits are the same on all the policies because I thought I noticed we were asking for two different limits yes for a liability insurance. between the general policy and the high school yeah well I, yeah or no, within I, or within one I don't oh, okay. I, I have to have yeah. it on my phone that's Sorry. okay we uh, so we, we'll talk about yes yeah, so yeah, we okay. have so you're on the committee yeah a street <laughs> is on the I didn't committee sound excited did I Oops. Sorry. yes uh, you and a, you you and Estrita yeah okay let me just ask a question because I never want anybody to feel like they're they left out well two things one that they left out or that they just elected for something for life and they didn't know it yeah are you interested in serving I'm not sure I don't <laughs> unless someone has a burning desire to it's in our blood now <laughs> right <laughs> I, I truly don't mind well, I was hoping you would continue because you have that. And there have been times in the back, in, yeah. in, 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 she would say, what about this policy? What are we doing with this? Yeah. It's not in the manual. It's not online. Where'd you get that? So uh, it's just every, every once in a while you uncover a okay. skeleton. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, don't mind, I don't mind sticking it out another year. Nice. Good. Three more years. Got to love it. All right. Oh, another year. Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> Okay, uh, and then the Strita is on. Now, if anyone else would like to join that committee. And when, are those, when do you meet? We usually meet on an afternoon, an early afternoon, like bef after lunch, but yeah. 
before dinner. Whenever so, a street I can normally. Yeah. yeah so usually works out better for me, especially 2 30, now. 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock kinds of stuff. But, you know, we, we do what people in the committee need us to do. Yeah, too. we're flexible. So. And we've had to do it over the telephone before, too. And I, and I like to do that one during the day because it allows me the opportunity to do immediate contact with legal counsel if need be. It's a little bit easier when you're dealing with the topic rather than, oh, yeah, I'll get to that tomorrow. Right. Um, so if anyone's interested, please let us know. We have the facilities and finances a subcommittee. We have the uh, policy subcommittee. And then this year we'll have negotiations committee. We have to deal with Chuck. Right. And then the construction committee. Yeah. Excuse me? The construction committee. And oh, the thank you. Oh, oh, no. oh, yes. How did I forget yes. that one? Yeah. Construction committee. Yes. So we have opportunities for anybody who, who is uh, interested in serving in any capacity, pretty much. Don't say you have any free time sitting at this table. <laughs> I'm going to grab you right up. Yeah, so the first thing we do is we look for the retired folks. <laughs> right. I had a great start of school this year, I must say. I must I bet you. felt different oh, than that. Amazing. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. I think the biggest surprise of retirement was that August is just so enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> you can relax. Yeah, rub that right in. You keep at it. <laughs> but yeah. Um, employment? Number New nine. hires? Number nine. No changes in no. staffing? Yep. And other? Uh, other, I've got a couple of others, and then Travis, I think you had an other that you were thinking about. I don't know. And I have but, an other that's need? just a note or an update. Okay. So, um, dear school board members, the Noble School District Nutrition Services has received the following check for the MSAD 60 Noble Community Lunch Fund. Please accept this donation on behalf of the Food Service Department, $500 from York Hospital. Yes. Oh, nice. Oh. I would make a motion. I would, yes, okay. I'll second it. Oh, all those in favor? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's see, what do we got? Seven? One, two, yeah, seven. Okay. So um, the reason yes. that we Mr. need to take oh, a vote on that, because you might think, who, who in their right mind would, Say no. if it's $500 or more in the policy manual, it says that the board needs to vote on it. A good example would be that we received a $750,000 grant two years ago um, for the multiple pathways program from an, a family, the Barr family in, in Boston, Mass. And there are certain pieces of that that says there's like an attrition of the funding, 350, 251, that sort of thing. So there are things that the district is obligated to pick up in that. So you need to say, we understand, we'll accept the money, and we understand that these are obligations that go with it. Mm -hmm. um, how, oh. how is that working out with the donations to this food program? Uh, um, is it? The school nutrition yeah, one, this one? Yeah. Is it helping with those kids that can't pay? Is that, is that well, what it's used for? Well, that, on that legislative list? Mm -hmm. It's a huge question you mark. You can't, really can't year. require them to pay. Can no. You? So last year we ran into that different. during the legislative session. That became one of the earliest laws that were, yeah, that was one of the earliest laws that uh, went into effect. So we ran into that last year. By February we had expended $8,000 that people had made donations and uh, the rest of the year we had to figure that out because food service is a separate line in the in the uh, articles when the budget, budget is voted on and you have to zero it out so Did if we go 10,000 in the hole we have to cover it mm -hmm. and you weren't able to collect the outstanding no there's no vehicle to really do that by because if somebody just says I'm not going to pay that it's between the family and the, there's nothing that says for instance right now that I can have that I can work with a municipality to have a lien put on 
a check or something like that. So until going the into the next recruits. school year, the same thing can just happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the and in the way that legislation was written, more so. people seem to. Mm -hmm. More so. It's going but to no solutions proposed. Not yet. Not yet. Well, I think so. if they're going to pass laws like that, they need to increase the funding you need for to the fund school. It. Yeah. You need to, you need to say every, every school is going to get a certain percentage of a contingency. That's my take on it. And the I'll be lobbying for that this year. It's one of my January send letters. The, send oh, the invoice okay. to the state. And if every mm. district did that, we could, see, we could I mean, see what would, happens. It would get some attention. <laughs> yes. So I will uh, be chatting with folks. And, uh, and I'd be interested to see if people here would, would like to take a trip someday to Augusta to uh, do a lobbying piece. And, and uh, I'll work that into schedules. And we can talk about certain topics that will come up that are going to be extensions of these of new legislation because it's the second year of the 129th. Um, one other thing to share is that um, I would like to highlight some of the accomplishments that the technology team undertook this year. Doubled the wireless capability of both the Elliott and Central schools. Remember we're two, uh, we cover two districts. Installed new wireless at a quarter of the budgeted cost at the Great Work School, 10 projector installations across both districts, added point-to-point -point wireless at Hussey School modular classroom and phones, prepared new devices for 90 new staff, and provided one-on-one -on -one and group training to get them ready for September. A full day of training that the place was packed and helped 90 folks leaving the district transition to personal accounts, changed iPad management software, and re-enrolled all Marshwood iPads, planned and prepared for K-1 iPad program, um, what do they call that? Alexia. Yeah. Alexia? Yeah, yeah, along that line. Yeah. Um, uh, this new software, uh, that's what I was thinking about. Uh, student accounts, sign-ups, apps to, uh, to each device, unboxed, inventoried, labeled, and enrolled over a thousand Chromebooks across both districts, reorganized Chromebooks so that they are now on cycle to move devices in and out of service in a more predictable fashion, and the list goes on. Automated the nightly report of student infinite campus to Traversa. Nightly, nightly reports on Traversa. Can I ask a question before you Yes, we please. Um, is it true that K-1 are going one-to-one -one on iPads? K-1 has What's that? Uh, the, we have pilots, so if people are interested in piloting, we give them uh, the opportunity to pilot. I don't know the specific number on who's piloting right now. No, oh, I don't know. But have it's a K not everybody. Here. I'm not, not all K1, or it is all. K1. I'm not aware that we have all K1 doing a pilot, because that wouldn't be much of a pilot. No, <laughs> I thought you yeah. pilot. I thought they piloted last year. Yeah, we had people pilot last year, and so this year we give people the opportunity if you're interested in piloting, so I'm sure we'll have and some more people or and come or on board. Maybe have some additional people on board. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I'll check into it. Yeah, once the year gets. I'll check into it once the year gets rolling. Let's talk about it again and see where we're at. Um, you may recall after Dwayne Moran's presentation that the high school has 13 poles that's going to be put into the. Uh, um, LED package with North Berwick. Uh, Knowlton School has three telephone poles. Hanson has two. Lebanon Ele Elementary has three. The middle school poles were done two years ago, converted to LED, and there are no other poles that aren't accounted for. So I'll be working with uh, Berwick, and I've already communicated with Steve Eldridge, and I'll be communicating with Lebanon about seeing where they're at in this to see if we can take more advantage of it. Sure. Um, I just had one, it was sort of an update to a news item that um, I had brought up a couple months ago with, that I thought was interesting at the time that the SAT um, College Board was going to be adding the adversity score, which they are now mm. not oh. going to do. Oh, they're not? What? No. <laughs> Where'd you um, see that? In the news. Number of different sources. I'll send you a couple articles. Okay. But it, it may end up being, it, may, it sounds like it may end up being better, but they got a lot of pushback probably mm -hmm. 
you know, from the predictable mm -hmm. segments. Mm -hmm. um, so it sounds like maybe what, and that was after a pilot program, um, the schools, some of the like higher, more elite schools that did pilot it actually found that after three years or so, they had a much higher percentage of students who were low income. So they found that it had been a successful program to, you know, open opportunities up. But it sounds like maybe the College Board is going to, instead of making it kind of like a blind adversity score, they're going to maybe just make it more general information about the school and the community and then like where the student landed um, mm. within that school. So, so it sounds like they're still looking to make more information available, um, just not in the form of sort of this score that I think it sounds like the feedback was that it was a little too obscure. Mm. So anyway, I think okay. it's interesting. I do think that mm -hmm. any of these efforts can help students from a community like Noble. So you know, I'm just kind of keeping an eye on it. Thanks for the update. Yeah. Did somebody else say they had another? Somebody over here? Hmm. Okay. okay. Yeah, oh, do that. any more public? Is there any more public input? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Quiet night. Michelle. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. Becky gets a second. Uh, Rock on, people. Seven fifty-five. Wow. Wow. Seven oh. So once, and we got we get a lot. All right. It must be Linda.